again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Garthwaite. Hey guys, I'm Carla Garrick. Ah, one week, one week, one week. One week and then remember, remember the 5th of November. You know, there's a I... lot of things we should probably remember on Tuesday. <laughs> we should remember the absolutely awful job that Joyce Craig did to the city of Manchester and, you know, she does not deserve to be governor of the state um, at all in any way. Uh, remember the rhetoric of the left, in my opinion, because I, if you know, everybody keeps talking about you know divisiveness and all this stuff and how, and they're nuts. I'm sorry, they so, are just nuts. So, so you know, I, I for folks back home possibly who saw this as well, I suppose overnight or yesterday, uh, President Joe Biden called everyone on the other side, much like Hillary Clinton did a few years ago, deplorables. Now, uh, everyone who doesn't vote Democrat is garbage. So that, and that is a quote. And then the New York Times actually had a headline that said, it appears as though he used said they were garbage. Appears, well, appears as though he, that said. he said. Like he so either said I went it and or he didn't. At the transcript and I'm like, no, 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 he did. Now, you know, to be fair, people on the other side will say, well, but there was this other guy who insulted Latino people. A comedian. People. And a I'm comedian like, doing his job as a comedian. Like the guy, I actually went and looked at some clips because I was like, well, is everyone losing their minds and what are the facts here? So here for you folks back home are the actual facts. A comedian got up, did a set. Comedy is often offensive. Comedy is often taking stereotypes right. and, you know, being a jerk about it. You know what's normal is people calling each other names. You know what is not normal is for the president of the United States to be doing it as opposed to a comedian. And if you're going to freak out about the comedian, then you have to equally freak out about Biden. Well, or more so because the one, again, comedy Real politician right. talking about his political opponents. Right. Well, Victoria had a thing this um, yesterday or the day before. There's this Angela, I think her name's Angela Philbrook. She's a nut job, like, hack on the Democrat side. She just goes after Republicans. So it's like... Local this, or... Yeah. yeah. Um, she shared a picture, and I was like, okay, you're so unhinged. So did you watch Yellowstone? Mm. Okay. In yeah, Ye parts of it. I thought it was a little which too... Which is a fictional show. <laughs> yeah. There's a, um, the train station, which is where um, they take people they want to disappear. Okay. And they kill them and throw them over this cliff or whatever. Up and whatever. It's fictional. It's called the... Oh, take them to the train station, right? So one day, <laughs> way back when, not even for politics, I don't think, Victoria must have had a picture and she had a hat that said it's a train station kind of day. <laughs> okay, first of all, that could mean a lot of different things. But even still, it's obviously a reference to Yellowstone, and it's kind of fun. You know, like, it's a fictional show. It's not real. Angela shared the picture and said how offensive it was because it was akin to sending people to concentration camps. And I thought, you people are absolutely insane. Like, how are you making that leap? Well, they're not making that leap because you can, any sane person would make that leap from that uh, hat based on a TV show to concentrate, killing people in a concentration camp. But this is part of the dem new Democrat strategy is to link Republicans and Trump and everybody to Hitler so that, and Nazis. So that That's was, insane. But, well, it was, it, it, it's not insane. It's strategic and it's, it's being done on purpose. But so, then don't stand there and say that we have to stop with the, the hateful rhetoric. Well, the thing is, I mean, what we're seeing in reality is hopefully, hopefully, hopefully peak Democracy is where I'm at at this stage, but I hope this is peak something because God knows we cannot keep doing this, right? I am going to keep a, I'm keeping a list, mostly for Tucker Carlson at this stage of, and Tulsi, because I personally saw her say it, right? All these people who are like, I know I've said it before that this is the most important election of our times, but guys, this time it really is. Now, I am actually willing to grant, given the totality of what we saw over the last four years of COVID that no one is talking about. You know why? Because both sides, mm. both sides 
did bad things. Both sides are like, oh, let's just not talk about that, which I think is part of the problem because we're not really talking about the right issues, right? Like right. everything is this frequency and level of hysteria. Yes. So immigrants, right? So it's like, okay, what's the truth about immigrants? Because God knows apparently they're all bad and everyone's just murdering everyone and all the nonsense. Turns out um, immigrants with criminal records and Americans with criminal records are actually on par. So illegal immigrants and Americans have about the same crime rate. Turns out the people who are the least criminal are legal Right. First generation right. American immigrants. Right. Well, that would make sense because they came yeah. here to better who's, themselves. Yeah. Who's, who's heard that? Right. No but, uh, one, no, right? I mean, so, no, it's very dehumanizing. So what's interesting, right? Like, everyone has their buttons, but when you're suddenly in the groups that are all getting hit on, I'm an immigrant, I'm a woman, right. I'm like... I'm a, I'm a Republican. I suppose I'm like, according to some people, some kind of radical extremist. And then you look at the way that people who know nothing about me are talking about right. people like me. And you're like, man, yep. everyone is um, a little friggin' nuts. But they are, they are like, this whole Nazi thing is like, it's just so unhinged. <laughs> like, I can't decide which group is more unhinged. The Republicans endorsing Harris because they hate Trump because they've got TDS so bad they can't let it go. Because it is. It's almost like a mental issue. Like you've you've ingrained it into your head so much that you could never support Trump that you would do anything to stop Trump. So that's that's the first bunch of crazies. And then there's the the Democrats who their candidates themselves are part of the crazy. I'm t Tim Waltz. Donald Trump's got this big rally going at Madison Square Garden. There's a direct parallel to a big rally that happened in the mid-1930s at Madison Square Garden. First of all, Madison Square Garden has been rebuilt like three times since the 40s, so it's not even the same building. And any large group of people, ra any rally or event, I mean, like... That's where you go in New York. It's Madison Square Garden. And I don't know, maybe the Democrats are just absurd, uh, upset that he could pack that with like 80,000 people where uh, she was expected to have 20,000 at the D.C. speech last night. So, like, is that the problem? Are you just upset that there's more Americans that actually buy into the Donald Trump so feeling? It's, it's going to be so interesting. So I'm seeing crazy numbers. I'm just telling everyone kind of what I'm hearing, mm -hmm. right? So... Um, because X is actually a really good yep. source of news. Well, because that it, is because, because it's, it's not just censored kind of through the filters, <laughs> right? Here's an example. So yesterday, Jeff Bezos, owner oh, yeah. of uh, Washington Post, yep. right? So the Washington Post has decided they are not going to endorse yep. and and this his time. lead editor or whatever resigned over it. Okay, so you know we have to not we have to endorse the Democrat. Um, it's what we do. So uh, Bezos actually wrote an op-ed in which he said, you know, here are the reasons. There are historically one f a previous time the owner said we're not going to endorse whatever. There is some precedent for it. But he was just like, look, I'm not going to do it. But then the way he writes his mea culpa is, you know, we have uh, – so – Politics is perception is reality, right? It's like, what do people think, right? So the reason things are so crazy yeah. now is because perception and reality are sort of clashing, and because of social media and the new tools for propaganda, uh, people's perceptions of things are extremely distorted, mm -hmm. right? Like, people think they live in the most dangerous time in the history of the world, and actually, you live in the safest time in the history right, of the right. world, and all these kinds of things, right? So he says, you know, we need to do a better job uh, of being perceived to tell the truth. I'm paraphrasing, but yep. that's actually what he said, right? Yep. And I was like, you know what? No. The point isn't that you have to, uh, have to be believed. You are believed when you tell the truth. Right, and you, so you're if, credible. If you can't acknowledge that you have spent years lying to the public in this newspaper, then you're not going to get better because you're not actually addressing the right issue. Your mea culpa can't be, oh, I'm sorry you don't believe us when we're lying to you, which right, is right. literally what it was, right? So I thought, huh, I'll just go ask uh, my new best friend, the AI, uh, 
summarize the top 20 stories that the Washington Post got wrong since 2013 when Jeff Bezos bought it. And lo and behold, the stories are the steel dossier, right? Wrong. That was lies, lies. It was the Hunter Biden suppression story. It's suppression of war crimes. It is really bad stuff that you would expect journalists and reporters and the First Amendment to tell us about, right? So now everyone's so frustrated with X because no one knows what to believe because they've been lied to for right, such a long right. time that the truth as it's bubbling out is making people's heads melt, right, right, I think. They can't because they're like, it. I don't know how to think about this. Like there was a clip with a young lady in college on abortion and there was a very calm, uh, uh, conservative, uh, speaker, lecturer, and they were talking, and you could see just based on the exchange that the, the student was so dysregulated because she had been told slogans right, that right. she could say, but when you ask her, why do you think that? What is the underpinnings? Where does this come from? Where does life come from? Yeah. What is a cell? What is right, a right. clump of cells? <laughs> when is it not a clump? You know, like, she just couldn't parse it no, out. because abortion extremists, Republicans. But it's because we have basically brainwashed people with like crazy slogans. And the number one thing we can all do is everyone needs to just start deciding for themselves what they think. Switch the TV off and just go sit in a dark room and be like, what do I believe? Um. I saw a couple things. One, um, I listened to, I didn't see it all, but I listened to most of the Joe Rogan um, interview with Donald Trump, three hours long. It was um, long. The follow up, well, because all of Rogan's interviews are basically three hours. This is the deal. You want to be on my show, which he asked Kamala numerous times, and he was said, Look, I'm trying to have a decent conversation with people, and it's three hours, and it's in his studio in Austin, and that's just what he does, and that's how it works. Well, she, f they finally said, Well, we could do it, but it can only be an but hour. But you must come to and us. And you have to come to us, and he's like, mm, no. no, that's not actually how it works. So and then Twitter totally melted down on that as well. And all these talking heads were like, how dare he? And I was like, how dare she? How do you? Well, you you're not you're not special. Well, no, the, here, here is the reality. She was in Texas. If that's you the killer. want independent media that is not beholden right. to people, then you, independent media says things like, no, you can come to me if right. you want my platform. Right. But I'm I, not beholden to you. I guess while they you. were asking her at one point, though, she was in Texas. She could could have done it. I, so, I don't think she can. Oh, do she it. can't sit there for three yeah. hours and talk. I My think God, that's could the you issue. imagine watching that? So I'm, I'm rewatching. I always rewatch Veep yeah. for the week before any of our presidential election cycles, yeah. just because it, it amuses me no end. And of course, they have like scenes set in New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. That annoying tall guy is actually from New Hampshire. It's very cute. But I realized last night when I started playing it, I was I was actually like doing something else and I just was listening in the background. And I was like, oh my God, Kamala Harris sounds like the Dits Veep in the because comedy she, show she where like the joke is there's this politician who just says nothing. It's just word salads of Sounds really and and then that would good. make sense because she's just a mimic. I mean, right. the fact that she keeps changing her accent, and I mean Hillary used to do it too. But I saw a clip this weekend where she was doing the the um, the preacher, the <laughs> preacher talk. You know, I don't, I can't even do it. And I was like, why would you? Why would you? To me, that would be insulting if you're if I'm sitting in a church. And you're trying to sound like my preacher when I know that's not what you sound like. But she does that. She does a southern drawl. She makes it sound like she's got this black accent. Honey, you grew up in Northern California. You went to school. You went to. You graduated high school in Canada. You you don't have a black accent. Right, but I actually have empathy with that because I think that is very chameleon. It is a, a sort of the nature, maybe even of politicians and stuff, because you're trying to. Ad Adapt to your, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I think you just talk. But back to the road. I don't thing. know. There's, My accent changes when I talk to South Africans or but Americans. That's a little, when you're or, talking to South, I, I can understand your accent, like your South African accent might be stronger when you're talking to South Africans because you're in your natural language. And then when you're in regular day in, day out in the United States, 
you're you're gonna sound like Carla. I mean, your, your voice, your your accent is your accent, right? Um, but so Joe Rogan, one of the quips he said afterwards, he was just said, you know, he. He said, you know, Donald Trump was, some of the answers were exactly how he expected they would be. Um, he goes, he does tend to go, he has a long, he <laughs> likes to talk. Uh, but he's, he said, I do think he's sincere in the things he says. And he goes, and I, he was impressed that he never had to get up and go to the bathroom once in three hours. <laughs> he goes, the guy's, you know, whatever, 78 years old or whatever. And didn't pee before the show, didn't pee during the show, didn't pee after the show. He goes, I don't know, I was kind of impressed. He's got his stuff together. Um, and there were like 33 million people watching it live. So Kamala, considering she needs to firm up her base with men, I think really missed an opportunity to try to do that. Um, the other thing I, a thing I saw a clip of was J.D. Vance being interviewed by God, some awful mainstream, you know, some awful ABC, not really yeah. news. And all they wanted to talk about was the general who goes after Trump all the time. I'm not going to mention his name because it's not even worth it. But So he was in the Trump administration. He's so appalled by the by Trump that he's seven years later, you know, going after him. And we should listen to this one person that, that Trump fired him because he wasn't so appalled. He wasn't appalled enough to resign the position. But once Trump fired him, then he became appalled. Right. So I'm like, oh, come on. Can you not people all see this? So anyways, they, uh, that's all they wanted to ask him about was this. And at one point he says, okay, so we're five minutes into this, um, you know, 11 minute, Interview. interview and you haven't asked me we, we haven't discussed anything about issues important to the american people and then they kept going and then it was like we're 10 minutes into the 11 minute interview and you still have not talked about any well, issues because they, they don't want to talk they, about the issues because if they talk about the issues they have to talk about inflation and they have to talk about people crossing the border and they have to talk about crime and they have to talk about all those things and yes, and, and and they don't want to because Kamala can't has no good answers for any no, of it. No, and also, I mean, come on, I mean, she's been the vice president. If there are problems, it's her yes. fault. And she, she clearly get said, to on, be like, Oops. she clearly <laughs> said on the View that she wouldn't have done any. Nothing came to mind that she would have done differently. And she said, and I was involved in all the major decisions. So I'm like, so you just owned the last three point <laughs> nine. Ah, years. So anyway, I did also see um, in states that are allowing early voting, yeah. uh, there has been a massive swing to, to Republicans. To Republicans, yeah. like by yeah. So that to me is kind of interesting because I wonder. I think the last election, you know, if there was election tomatoes, who knows? Right, right. But let's say in 2020, that may have been, uh, you know, that was very strongly a female vote, right? right? Like that's sort of how it was framed. And people don't often talk about this, but there are a lot of uh, disenfranchised. So it's gone up over the years, but in 1996, I think, or 2000 maybe, there was less than 50% of Americans voted who are mm -hmm. eligible to vote. It was actually a 49% election. Okay. And I remember because I was like, oh, this is a good argument against democracy because now you can't even say it's the majority of anyone, right? Like, because most Americans at that stage were kind of like, life's good and I'm disengaged. Yep. I'm doing these other things, right? But now because the government has a finger in literally everything we do, um, Everyone's invested, right? And we've dialed up this this energy. So I wonder if it's it's all this sort of disenfranchised dudes who kind of had stopped voting who right. are kind of coming well, back, or, right, right? Right. Or a younger generation that, like, say the forty year olds that didn't weren't engaged, right, in those in the nineties, but then their kids have grown up now. So they are engaged because if you're young, I mean, there's a lot of it, life's not fun for you. Um, made me jump to a brain <laughs> thing. So I, did you see the there's an ad out by the Make American Healthy Again Alliance? OK. And it's funny because all the clips we saw, almost all of them had nothing to do with health. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they have an ad out talking about Kamala's years as governor pr predominantly. I mean, it does talk about other things. But so when she was um, AG. She was attorney general of the state of California. God only knows how people get these jobs. But um, she, they got her on video, and I'm like, yeah, did, why have we not seen this before? 
Um, she decided to prosecute parents for their kids' truancy. For truancy. truancy, yes. And she was like serious. She goes, "This is costing the state of California 1.4." billion dollars because they weren't getting federal money when the kids weren't in school or whatever and at one point there's a clip in it she goes i like money i want the money <laughs> well not only that i saw one actually where they interviewed the a mom mother with this who, handicapped daughter she i don't even know if it was a handicapped daughter but yeah okay so so you know that's where you go okay what are the silos we're living in here's tammy and i we both saw the same video i do remember actually being like man they're laying it on thick i didn't realize there was a handicapped daughter well, too i just the the, the mom, one I heard she was the to... mom who said, my handi my daughter, my handicapped daughter, she had a walker or something, had missed a bunch of school. She goes, I didn't think I would get arrested. Right, and, but then, and she, then she does she lost become her job. A, a, she got evicted. Her daughter she, she was in this homeless. clip. It's now that like her daughter's whole... grown, and she's like, yeah, you can't trust Kamala Harris. And, and so, and that's just also one of those examples where you know we have to be so careful about the unintended consequences of something, yep. right? But also incentives matter. Yep. So there was an issue of some crazy AG who who's like, well, I want the goes, bennies. She goes I want like the this. I've got it. She goes, as Attorney General, I have a really big stick. She goes, so I looked at the you know, the people going to st the police or whatever and said, make sure you're mean when you go. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, because you're a normal person. So that bothered me. So I saw uh, Chief uh, Ellenberg um, is going to be re yep, yep. Re uh, retiring. Sorry. Yeah, you know, I saw some more. years old. So, so I looked um, up, did some looking up because I always feel like I don't know. So his, um, ch his pay at the time of retirement is one, well, in 2023, so it might actually be more now, $164,558 a year. So... I went to the pension thing because I wanted to make sure, like, I don't understand. So Chief Aldenberg is 53 years old. Um, the way the pension system for Tier 3 or Tier 2 Section C, which is basically police officers, um, if you've served 25 years, which he has, he's got 27 years, and I shouldn't say serve, if you've been employed for 25 years, because you didn't, it's not service, it's employment, um, and you are 52 and a half or older, and he's 53 years, you get your full pension, which would be half, so he'll be taking home $82,000 a year for not doing anything at the age of 53 for the entire rest of his life. Um, the way the pension did work, because I was like, okay, I'm going to say it out loud, because if I say it out loud enough times, maybe I'll remember. Early pension, if you were, if he was 50 years old, if he was under the 52 and a half, his pension would be reduced by one quarter of 1% for every month under 52 and a half. I'm just saying, it's not like it goes down to $20,000 by any means. So um, he'll be making 82,000 there. And then I didn't, I wasn't able to print it, um, but I did see just before I left that he took out, he has a new job already. Um, he's gonna be overseeing the new Easter Seals Military and Veterans Center. So. God only knows how much he's going to be making there and if he will be accumulating um, a retirement package there as well. So that second job or this new job doesn't sound like it's uh, actually in the public sector. No, but often it's, times, it's funded by well, the public sector because yeah, yeah. it's the Easter seals. Right. So, so, I mean, to me it seems like the fair thing, right? It's double dipping. Like if you are like, oh, I'm going to take the bennies here, but then I'm going to go work over here. Maybe you shouldn't And be it's able. like, well, isn't this the safety net to try and... Well, like, the, the uh, pension people will argue they put the money in and they're entitled to the money. In. And I'm like, yeah, but we, I think more than once we've had to reinvest money into the pension fund to keep it solvent so um it's, it's so i i'm actually curious i, I, I don't know i was having you... a conversation with victoria um, um that this came up and i said you know it's kind of crazy she said this goes it's kind of crazy if you think about it so it's based on your three highest your last three years or your three highest years right of income so the most you make and um what is the incentive we're building things that make it non-incentived, non-incentivized to stay employed. There is zero incentive for a 53-year-old man who can get 100% of his pension benefits to stay on the job. None. There is nothing. Because you might as well just do your high three years and then leave. So we're never going to have a chief that was there for 10 years because they're going to do their three-year stint and then they're going to retire. Um, we're going to run out of time. I did want to make some quick production productions. Yeah. Predictions, um, and I'm curious how you think. 
Um, I have no idea how the New Hampshire House will turn out. It's too hard. There's too many seats. There's too many things going on. Um, I did look at the state Senate numbers. So right now we have 14 Republicans and 10 Democrats. I don't see how that could possibly, I don't see how the Republicans can't maintain a majority. And I would not be surprised to see that 14 Republicans go up by maybe two. Um, it depends. It, uh, you know, I can't possibly know what's going on in all of these. Um, but even if we lose, even if a couple of Republicans lose, I think a couple of Republicans are going to win, and I think that'll be interesting. Um, I personally think um, Chris Pappas will win CD1. Um, I think Lily's got as much of a chance as anybody of winning CD2. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say for folks who are on the fence, go out, support Lily. She's yep. a good candidate. Yep. She grew up in communist China. Yep. She's probably like the person who best understands what we are facing. I also ask for your vote for yep. me on November 5th because I, too, come from a totalitarian police state, and I, too, um, understand what is happening. I think Ayat beats Craig. It's not going to be very big spread, I don't think. Um, and if I had a bet of... If I mean, I, 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 I you, it is not outside the realm of possibility that Trump wins New Hampshire. So New Hampshire is in play. Yep. It was not officially on the swing state uh, no, but roster, he, but, but it is now. Yep. The last polls that have come out, I think if you guys want... You know, the American dream, the yeah. sort of bombastic, want, we're America, if you want free we are speech, great, if you and want free, to protect speech. free speech, if you want to protect religious freedom, if you want to protect families' rights, if you want to protect your gun rights, any of those things, I don't care. You cannot base your, and if your vote on a personality. You thinks, have to vote on policy. But also, if anyone thinks Trump is a dictator. He's not. Have you seen the man? Yeah. If he was going to be a dictator, he would have done it yeah. already. Calm down. Yeah. So it'll Vote be interesting. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday. We'll know who won and who didn't. And um, it'll be interesting. Just make sure you get out there and vote. If you have any questions, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. Um, otherwise, enjoy the weather. It's going to be in the 70s again, I think, tomorrow. Yep. Um, that's all we got. Thanks, See you next guys. week. Bye. Bye.